Hello and welcome to That Girl Magic, the podcast where we explore the transformative power of wellness, self-improvement, and magic. I'm your host, Karina Franco, and I'm thrilled to embark on this journey of discovery with you. Hi and welcome back. I hope you're good. I hope everything's fine. And I actually want to have, I want to say a lighter episode, but more of a chit-chatty episode because Sometimes I sit and I have conversations with people, clients, strangers um, that I come to find out that we all have similar ways of seeing certain topics. And I think one of the ones that I've come to find the most similarities is when you go through a period of your life where you're sad, depressed, and everything just feels like it's going wrong for you, your external reality will follow suit. If you believe that you're not good enough, you're not strong enough, you're having a really hard time in your mental space, your physical space will also shift. And then when the opposite happens, like when you start to see life in a more positive outlook, when you start to see the world in a different way, in a more positive, more loving, more self-fulfilling way, your surroundings also change. So I actually wanted to bring up my personal example of my life before and after what I like to call my own transformation. Because like a couple of years back, if you would have met me. I was someone that wore a lot of black clothing, loose fitting clothing. I was pretty much hiding myself under my clothing. It's like I would wear like loose fitting leggings that didn't even make me look right. I would wear hoodies. I would hide under clothing. I didn't wear like form fitting clothing. I wouldn't wear colorful clothing. I always wore like some sort of version of black or gray I would wear the occasional blue or the occasional green but very much in the black all my clothes were like black on black on black and the same thing with like my hair like I didn't care about my hair I always wore my hair up I always wore my hair whatever way it wanted to be if I had split ends I would just let them be like I wouldn't really care and there were moments where like I would have this moment of caring and I would like dye my hair or do my nails or I would have this outward look as if everything was fine when in reality, mindset wise, it wasn't fine. And I could even tell you that even back when I was in cosmetics, I had this almost I need to look presentable for work, but outside of work, like I don't care. And that's exactly like the kind of life I left is like. At work, I would have my hair washed and looking pretty and looking good. And I'll have my makeup and then my makeup would look good and blended. But then outside, I was like bare face, hair up into a messy bun, like thick clothes that would hide my body shape and and then when the pandemic occurred and I kind of forced to be with my own thoughts and I came to the realization that I was just very very negative and I had a lot of factors contributing to that negativity I had gone from job to job that I didn't like that I felt bad in that the team was bad that I was emotionally abused by by my coworkers. I was dealing with people being mean, with people being demanding outside of what is accessible. What I mean by that is like instead of them being demanding in the things that made sense being demanding, it's like they were just like being demanding on like small little details. And I was dealing with like jobs that like one minute they were paying me well, one minute they were paying me badly. I've had to get into like litigations and legal troubles with certain companies because they just like tried to take advantage of me and not only me, but multiple other people. So it's like I had to deal with a lot. And then with the pandemic, it's kind of like I was at home. I was surrounded by people that cared for me, that loved me, that 
made me feel good but at the same time I wasn't good within myself like mentally I was just all kinds of messed up so when I had to sit with myself and kind of like face my troubles I started to like slowly heal like I slowly started to realize that you don't have to hide yourself like that you don't have to limit yourself like that so no joke but like I started to have a disdain for the color black in a way. I started to hate being dressed in black. Like I wanted to wear color, but then I realized that my whole wardrobe was black. So little by little, every single time that a clothes would rip or a clothes wouldn't fit, I would just throw it away. Or if it didn't fit, like I would give it and donate it. I would ask a other family members if they wanted it and slowly switch my wardrobe. So now anyone that actually meets me now, it's like I am wearing color on every aspect is like from my underwear to like my outer clothing try to not use black the only black nowadays that pretty much I use is like shoes and certain pants like my work pants but if I can it's like workout gear I have everything in color my clothes everything is in color my neutrals are more within like the browns and the nudes and the beiges like I try to stay away from black as much as possible because I truly don't like to see myself in black I feel like it ages me I feel like this heaviness when I wear it and funnily enough I ended up using the information that I acquired when it came to my schooling, when I did my makeup and styling course, I knew about color analysis and color consultation. So I was like, you know what, let me just refresh my memory and let me try to analyze myself. And funnily enough, like I'm a soft autumn, so I don't look good in black. I don't look good in stark white. I look good in like these soft muted colors these soft jewel tones I look good in gold when I used to wear silver a lot because I thought that I looked bad in gold I look good in like warm tones and it's funny thinking that because I was like oh my god like I was dressing as if I was in color analysis what we call like a deep winter in reality it was a soft autumn it's like almost pretty much the complete opposite because winter and cool and I was soft and warm so it's like complete opposite and then ever since I started to like incorporate colors that were within my color palette it's like everyone around me was like oh my god your hair is so pretty your skin is glowing and even not only that like self-care my self-care changed I incorporated a, a routine I was so depressed at some point in my life where like being truthfully like I wouldn't brush my teeth sometimes for months I would go months without brushing my teeth and then I would go to the dentist and have like three, four, five tooth decays and a lot of plaque. And nowadays, like I brush my teeth two times a day. I floss. I I go to the dentist every six months to get a checkup done. And, a, and, a, and it's interesting how much I've changed. Like my so much more preoccupied with my health. I'm so much more into the world of wellness, like the skincare, the self-care, the hair care. I take care of my body. I take care of my hair. I take care of my skin. I want to like I have found my dream perfume to be my signature perfume. And it's interesting looking at photos and videos of my old self and thinking, my goodness, it's like it's night and day it's like two different people I feel so much more like myself now than I felt before it's like things don't affect me the same way my emotional intelligence is different I don't want to have friendships for the sake of having friendships I want to have true friendships that make me grow and make me a better person I want a partner that respects me and is loyal and it's kind and polite and gentlemanly and it's like the night and day of what I had versus is so much different and it all comes to mindset it all comes to what we think and see and believe in our heads it is so interesting when you talk to someone that is stuck in this loop of depression and taking medication for depression it is so weird that in our society we shun people that go into therapy when it's one of the best tools that we have there's people that go to therapy 
because it makes them feel so much better and it makes their weeks a lot better. And that emotional support is really important because some people can just do it by themselves. They can just get themselves out of the hole that they got themselves into, that gently dug them into. And some people don't. Some people need the help. And I advise people, if you need the help, like, go get the help. Because it is so sad to see people in that hole, in the muck, in the dirt, in whatever they're dealing with and not having the help that they need. For me, I knew that my issues were not related to requiring help from someone else. I needed to dig deep into myself. I needed to focus on myself and I needed to basically spend time alone because my life was very much wake up in the morning, get ready, go to work, be with people, be surrounded with people, but feel lonely. And then I would spend my time on my phone, on my computer, watching stuff time after time after time after time. It's like I was addicted dopamine i was addicted to the constant feedback of social media of watching a video of spending time with people talking to people to the point that nowadays funnily enough when i come back from work my family already knows i'll tell them hello but then i want silence i don't want music i don't want people talking to me at least for like 30 minutes i need complete and outer silence because I am so stimulated outside of my house that I need to remove the stimulation so that I can be a normal human being. Because it's like my job nowadays is like I go and I need to talk to people all the time. I need to talk to my colleagues so that we can work together. I need to talk to people so that I can sell the items. I need to deal with computer stuff and all that so it's like I am surrounded by th that just from people and then music and noises and chit chatter and all kinds of things it's like by the time that I get home my social battery has run out and I need quiet because I got so used during the pandemic where like my mom was working my aunt was working my sister was at school and she would like close herself in the dining room my grandparents would get out of the house sometimes for other stuff and I would be alone and I just had me myself and I and when you have only me myself and I and then on top of that like I could go to bed whatever time I want I could wake up at whatever time I wanted but funnily enough my body got used to like waking up early and going to bed early and it got to a point where like I was waking up at five six o'clock in the morning naturally I was like, okay, what do I do? It's like, I have nothing to do. I don't have work to do. I don't have tasks to do. My bedroom is clean. My house is clean. I don't really have anything to do. So I very much went inward. Like I journaled a lot. I wrote a lot. I meditated a lot. I did a lot of healing work. I learned a lot as well. And that really got me into a point where I was like, this is it. Like. This is your issues. These are your problems. And now you need to figure out how to, how to fix them, how to, how to deal with them, how to understand them, how to go deeper. Because the way that I see life is like the digger, uh, the, the higher you go up, the more stairs you step up, the deeper your roots and your problems need to dig. It's kind of like a tree, like the taller the tree grows, the deeper the roots are. And that's the same thing with people. It's like we all have limiting beliefs. We all have things we need to work through. And I came to realize that my mindset and the way that I saw the world affected the most out of everything. So my advice to anyone listening to this, to you listening to this, if you are in a point in your life where you're seeing everything in a negative way, find out why. Find why you are creating these narratives, these beliefs, these stories of why you should dress a certain way, why you should do it a certain way, especially if it doesn't resonate with you, especially if you feel like it doesn't fit with you. Because I always felt like a misfit. I always felt like 
this doesn't make sense for me. Like, this is not how I feel. Like, I'm dressing this for the sake of dressing. This is how society tells me that I'm supposed to dress. When in reality, what I was dressing made me stand out like a sore thumb because it grabbed more attention than if I dressed the way that I wanted to dress. Because let's be honest, 99% of the times that you go on a a public transportation and you are just living your life, no one gives a damn. No one. No one is going to care that you might be listening to a podcast. No one will care if you're listening to a book, a book talk inspired song. No one is going to care whatever book you're reading. No one is going to care about the clothes you're wearing. As long as you aren't breaking any rules and you're not flashing anyone, they don't care. Deep down, they don't care. They might look at you. They might stare at you for like a split second. And then they'll walk onto their merry lives because when you are concerned about someone else, like someone else's opinions, funnily enough, that person may get concerned with you for like 10 seconds and then they'll be concerned about someone else's opinions about themselves. We live in this loop of I am concerned about someone else's opinions. And if someone looks at you, they might be concerned about your about you and then they'll be concerned about other people's opinions of themselves because everyone is so intricately focused on themselves and about what they need and what they want and what others think of them that they will not care for you for longer than 10 seconds and i don't mean caring as in the actual act of caring for someone i mean like a stranger Do you really think that that stranger is going to focus on the fact that you're wearing colorful pants for longer than 10 seconds? They're probably going to look at you. They're either going to think that it's cool or it's weird. And then after that, they're going to be like, oh, what do they think of me? Oh, and my job and my family and this and that. Like, they'll just make this list in their head. Just like you make that list on your head of like everything that you need to be concerned about that society told you to be concerned about that you are concerned about that you you judge yourself of and that is what takes people into that hole is what makes people go into the muck and the dirt into the and into that darkness and then when you start to shift and go into the light and see life in a different way and dress in a different way and be more into yourself you will realize that there were things that you cared about that didn't even and that's the point that i want to come across There are things that I was so extremely concerned about that it really didn't matter. I was so concerned that people would mock me for not wearing dark colors outside. And now I have this multicolored pants that I love. It has the super bold pattern that I freaking love. And sometimes I get these weird looks, but most of the time, nothing. No one even bats an eye because it's like, it's just pants so i'm gonna stop wearing one of my favorite pants just because of maybe one weird look once a day is that what's gonna stop you from wearing what you want and dressing the way that you want and acting the way that you want i sure hope not and this is my invitation i am inviting you right now i am inviting you to look at yourself in the mirror and make a decision and a promise to yourself To be fully and completely your authentic self. Step into the reality of who you are meant to be and who you are. And once you do that, your reality will completely shift. And once it does, you will see your dreams, wishes, and realities change. Not only for the better, for what you want. And I wish you all the best. And I love you. Have a great one. Don't forget to follow That Girl Magic to stay updated on new episodes. Let's unleash our inner magic and create the life of our dreams. I'll see you in the next episode.